You're not messing around, man. Dude, you don't even know what I've accomplished already today. You know what? I can throw that right back at you. Yeah, I am, uh, man, this taper thing, I'm getting all kinds of stuff done. I know, Yesterday man. I got a ton of stuff done at the house today. Let's see, so right now we're recording, it's 9 a.m. on uh, Wednesday, October 4th. 11 days have, left. <clears throat> 11 days left. I have uh, done two sim analysis. I have worked on training plans. I have uh, overseeded the backyard and watered the front grass. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, that's that's impressive, man. Yeah, I'm in a zone, man. I'm, I'm not going to lie. I, I'm a little obsessed with my grass right now, trying to make sure that it's, uh, it gets green and gets right because... We're in that crucial part of the season, and since we had a new house, it was a sod in the front, and they kind of leave you to do your own thing in the backyard, so I'm uh, trying to stay on top of it, and as a bonus, the uh, Metro Water Company is, like, behind, and so they haven't gotten with the builders yet to switch over the water, so right now I'm just having them pay for it, so uh, uh, I'm going to use that sucker till I mean, I'm going to... Might have a, I might have to get an like arc or something. I'm just going to water in this grass day and night. Hey, do you think there's a hose long enough to fill my pool back? <laughs> <laughs> or can we do like some kind of transport truck? Um, I could, yeah. I mean, I, actually, one of my um, my brother-in-law lives in this neighborhood, too. And he was like, man, you should just like start like uh, acquiring those huge like, you know, water ju- office cooler jugs and just filling them with water and storing them on your patio. Yeah, man. But you know, I'm not that guy. No, no, no. That's uh, yeah. It'll come back. That all comes back. You know, just yeah. Do the right thing. Uh, I I like that you're uh, obsessed with the lawn, man. I I've gone through that phase many times, and now it's, yeah, you got to nail that side now. Now's the time to make it happen. Yep. Late uh, spring, early fall, and that's the, where we are. They're doing it right next door. Sod, oh man. yeah, that's yeah. Right. yeah. Every day I wake up, my car is wet because the sprinkler system just. <laughs> yeah. But you know, oh. whatever. Yeah. Uh, I'll have you know that I'm already done with my swim. No way. Yeah, yeah. Um, got in the pool at six thirty today. <laughs> I was driving they home like some, they at seven like fifteen, and they were like, "Who the hell is this?" Yeah, there was a lot of looks. There's Did you go of... downtown or Margaret Maddox? Oh, no, no. I went downtown. Good. I was going to say, if you're going to get that early, dude, you might as well go to the good pool. Yeah, there's a lot. Of, and it's really nice because you're, well, although there's a lot of crazy people on the road at 630 trying to get to work in yeah, the dark. Yeah, man. Man, uh, driving like crazy. You know, and yeah. I'm just kind of waking up and I'm like, easy, bro. Yeah. Cool it. Easy, bros. Cool it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I got in the pool, man. I was, I was, you know, I just went down there for 1500 I was like, all right, you know, I'm just going to go keep the feel, you know, work on the things. And, uh, yeah, out of there by 715 which is like a record. But let me, the key, oh, and then I came home and I got out of my car, grabbed my work gloves and picked up all the limbs that I cut off my trees yesterday. Wow. <laughs> so there is something to be said for this tapering, I think. For sure. I mean, it was kind of just like natural instinct more than, you know, saying I have to do it. I just did it. It was interesting. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah, that's the thing. I think, and I think that's like the genesis of like the, um, like the taper freak out. It's not so much a freak out. It's that you, you've been in such like, especially like doing anything like longer, like a 70.3 or even it's like your first big race. Um, you have been like so focused and like all of your energy and you've been so tired and exhausted that you can really only like think to the, to the day you've got at hand Mm -hmm. and then maybe to the next day. But other than that, you just mentally and emotionally and and physically just, you're like, I can't even think until Saturday because I got too much on my plate right now. And then when that starts to free up, your mind has the ability to wander because your body's like starting to feel recharged and it's amped up and like, man like I've got all this free time I've got all this uh you know like mental and emotional energy like I'm I'm excited and you're like man like I just I just want to do a lot of stuff and you can just get like like yesterday I like vacuumed the whole house cleaned up our playroom did the laundry 
did like three swim analysis run. I mean, I was just like, man, I was like, what am I going to do with the rest of my day? Yeah. Um, you know, stuff like that. So yeah, I mean, there's, there's a lot to be said for, for why people, you know, I think get into that, get into that mode. But, um, well, you know. I was going to, uh, you know, over the last week I've been, uh, really conscious of trying to get up early you know just to get my body sort of synchronized a little bit for the, mm-hmm. the race day and i've been going to bed with this idea that i'm going to get up and you know i'm going to really make an effort to get out of bed and, and and fight through it and like before today the last three days I got up and, you know, the alarm went off and I was like, you know, screw this, man. I'm not, you know, I just felt like I was like, I hadn't slept because I go to bed late. So that's part of my problem. But so last night I went to bed with this uh, idea that I was, I wasn't even going to, you know, I gave up. (laughs) I was just like, you know, I'm a a late night podcast kind of guy and I just was listening and I just, I get, I don't know, for some reason that stuff puts people to sleep, but it gets me wired. Mm -hmm. Um, But anyway... The point being is we both have one of our favorite authors, poets, is Bukowski, right? I oh, mean, yeah. We both, which is kind of weird. I guess it makes sense that we like him, right? You know, even though his like lifestyle has nothing to do with what we want to do, but the way he thinks <laughs> yeah, and yeah. the way he writes um, is interesting. But one of the big things that he always talked about was this concept of don't try. That's his mm-hmm. big deal. And and it and it started and that's what I thought about this morning was like I just woke up at five thirty, and I was like, all right, I laid there and I just expected this uh, wave of tired to come back over me, right? And uh, it didn't, and I just got up and then I walked around my house for a while and I'm like, all right, it'll it'll come. I'll just you know duck back in there, <laughs> go to bed, and I didn't. But the point being is. I, I think it, you know, it kind of piggybacks on what you're saying about the taper because there's something magical about not trying, and and not in the, you know, like not try to be a good per, you know what I mean, like just letting go. I think mm-hmm. that's really what it is, and I think that 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 is something that's really in my head this morning about with regard to the race itself too, you know, and you know, I went to the pool and. uh my I forgot to charge my watch my so I wasn't able to really even pay attention to my time or anything like that and I just swam yeah and it felt good you know and it's like um you know letting things come to you letting your body just move in directions and and that's when you just start doing stuff but if you like overload yourself with these goals and concepts of you know just i gotta i gotta really try hard to do something today or whatever it may be Mm -hmm. i i think there's something to be said i mean that's sort of a flow state right you know yeah it's it's all flow and that is that is long course racing right it's one it's one big flow and and you know and and that's something that i'll go over with um my athletes you know as we as we are getting there right to um you know, right into race strategy is, is there two things that you absolutely do not want when it comes to, you know, either your first, second, you know, first little 70.3 or any Ironman is you don't want your first 30 minutes to an hour of the bike to be your highest power output of the day. And you don't want your first mile of the run to be your fastest. And if you can take those just here's and here's the here's the thing, they're so simple yet so hard. Mm-hmm. Um, but it is about flow. And, and and for okay, so for me, for in my opinion, for my my strategy, I have I will, I'm going to be very conservative on the bike for the first hour to two hours. Um, I want my fastest split to be my. I want my 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 highest power output, my highest energy effort, to be on the back, um, the back two to two and a half hours of, of the the bike course, and then the middle to last part of the run. But the thing about flow is, and the thing about and the reason it correlates really well to long course racing is, is in order to be in a in a what I would call like a flow ready state, you have to be relaxed. Yep. And if you're not relaxed and you like jump out of the gate, get on your bike, forcing it for the first 30 minutes, 
you're tensed, you're already kind of, I would call overreaching already. And now you're, now you, you have no longer put your, you put yourself in a, in a, in a state or an environment or in a scenario where flow is actually, um, an option because let's say you, and so for the run, for example, let's say you start out at like a 200 watt effort and you knew that was too high. You run or bike? Bike. Okay. In a 200 watt effort and you're, and you know that was too high. Well, now the rest of the ride, you're forcing yourself to slow down mm -hmm. or you're in that mental battle of, yeah, but I don't want to see my watts dip because that, because mentally, like, think about it this way. If you had to pick. The, I, I want my watts to jump from 190 to 205 over the course of the ride, or I want it to start at 200 and I have to barely hold on to 200 and watch it kind of wean down to 190, 185 as the ride goes. Mentally, you know which one you'd pick. Mm -hmm. um, you want it to rise. The same thing with the pace and the pace for your run. Watching it drop or wa watching it, you know, go up uh, rather, is it's not demoralizing, but you're now forcing everything. You're either forcing to restrain yourself or you're forcing yourself to speed up. And so the importance of flow and the importance of, of relaxing and focusing uh, on warming up and letting the race come to you, because there's that exploratory phase in an Ironman and it all happens, it all happens, the f at least in my opinion, the first hour to two, maybe two hours of the bike. Mm -hmm. Within that window, you pretty much know how your day is going to go. But you can only know that and be able to react accordingly and be able to execute and dial it in or adjust if you're in a state to where you can actually feel that and not force it. Yeah. And just because swimming's on my mind from this morning, I think that, you know, obviously you're a very competent and confident swimmer. I just think that this is one of those things that... Uh, a lot of people think about too i mean i think it's just i personally you know like if you're going out and you're in some kind of race and it's a good idea to try and get out fast and find some open water i know a lot of people practice that or whatever but i think for me in the swim i mean i was going through the mantra today it's like you know 500 yards let it come and then go hard for whatever 300 out to that buoy and then just settle back in you know i'm, I'm mm -hmm. really trying to be in that mentality of of letting the swim come to me and then you know that it's just i mean every every discipline you got to let kind of come to you but um regarding the bike it's yeah i i know that 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 that's the thing is like you get out of the water and then you're like okay that sets up my day right you know so you if you're slower than you wanted to be then all of a sudden like i had a tendency to get like on that bike and just be like all right you know i gotta make a you know what i mean it's like you can get in that head or that head space and uh and sort of disrupt your whole game plan based on the first hour or so yeah i mean in for you know a lot of people do that um you know and, and i would like to say that you know for me when i start out with the swim especially one where you don't get to warm up like louisville mm -hmm. you know you basically get in the water cold mm -hmm. which i just hate mm -hmm. i despise that um I actually will go off, not go off, but I, I will start out with a little bit more of a steady pace to get into a rhythm. Mm -hmm. And then once I find what I would call like my feel or my, you know, my rhythm and stroke rate, then I just kind of settle into on my own pace. But I found that if I start off just like too slow, mm -hmm. it's hard for me to find that feel. Um, it's hard for me to get into a rhythm that I, I can, then I can then control mm -hmm. and get into a flow versus starting out slow and then like all right now you, it, it for me it just takes too long to search and to find it and so I, I think that um you know i think that while you know a lot of people have different ways of starting the swim out for various reasons because it is uh you know such a usual hyper anxiety type of event uh and it's at the start and you're not warm you know there's so many things in fact in and, and wetsuits I think add to a lot of people's anxiety just because of the, the like almost like claustrophobic feel um, I, I think the, the, the quicker you can find your groove and your your what I would call like your controlled swim stroke the better the rest of your race is going to be because then you because once you found that 
mm-hmm. you don't you don't necessarily want to let your mind wander, but you can start thinking then about executing the race. Like when I when I swim, I think of, I I kind of have like a mantra that I'll keep um, for the first you know probably half until I I know that I'm in a good rate. I know that I don't have to pay attention every two seconds, and then I'll start to think about. <clears throat> All right, I'm gonna get out of the water in T1. I'm gonna go straight. I'm gonna put this on first, then this on, then this on, then this on, then this on, then this on. And then how am I gonna execute on the bike? But I can't get to that point until I've found myself in almost like an, uh, a subconscious rhythm to where I don't have to think about what I'm actually doing. Yeah. That's, that's exactly what I was going to say. It's usually about the halfway point of that swim. It's just sort of like, all right, and you can kind of let it go and then find that pocket yeah i was thinking about uh another thing when i was swimming you know what it's a uh i've talked about like you know how uh, when you, we were talking about once i think driving in a storm when the when the rain is just coming down and and you and you really try to focus hard on the road ahead mm-hmm. it becomes difficult to see because you start looking at and what you're seeing is the rain a lot and i think about yep. that in the pool or in the, in the lake, too, is like, I was thinking about, you know, uh, I've talked about before where I sort of look around at the surroundings and try and relax and take in, you know, if it's a, if it's a beautiful swim or whatever. But I also try to just sort of, like, gaze instead of, like, focus, you know. And, mm-hmm. let, and, and like, when you're in the water, like, if you put your head back in the water and you just start looking into the water versus just kind of, like, letting it all just be kind of a lack of a better word of the days and i was doing that out the lake the other day and i ran head on into a guy wearing a snorkel <laughs> by the way <laughs> it, was like, it was like two people out there in that whole area of you know 900 yard loop and i blasted into this guy <laughs> it's like what the fuck <laughs> anyway the but T-bone. I, yeah go, yeah, it go ahead it'd be about the relaxation of not like looking so hard with your eyes and just kind of letting your eye sockets relax while you're in the water too you know and uh you know. letting your eye sockets relax oh yeah yeah do you tend to tense up in your eye socket well i just think whenever you kind of like it's again it's that like trying to see instead of just seeing yeah that's true yeah i can see that that's the uh, back to the bukowski uh-oh. is don't try just kind of like be with your whole body instead of like looking everywhere and sighting all the time and like you know just let it come you know yeah you're Espe- forcing it yeah um, especially you know because i think about the the when you have a downstream it's a little i would think and you may be correct me if i'm wrong but it seems like it would be a little harder to get off course you know what i mean it is for when you're I mean, wh- wh- at least once you make that turn mm-hmm. once you make that turn to go back with with the current yeah, I mean, there's really no excuse um, because the you know the thing is is that you know, if you get pulled into like more of the middle, you know the current is usually stronger in the middle just because the the water is deeper, um, so you're not really gonna lose that much. But yeah, I mean, you should really not. Um, and most people too are also the right side breathers, mm-hmm. so you're gonna have buoys on your left, the side you don't see, and kayakers to your right. So you can almost sight just on your regular breath by knowing how far away the kayakers are. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, it's the, you know, you're going to sight a ton in the beginning because it, it is there is going to be more people. It's going to be more congested. It's narrower. You're looking into the sun, and it's against the current. After that, it should be smooth sailing, um, and, and it's a perfect course to kind of settle into a rhythm. Let your, ryth- your let your rhythm do the work. Let the current help you a little bit, and prepare for, uh, you know, walking through and even kind of visualizing how you're going to execute the next aspect of your day. Um, and I, and I use that same philosophy in terms of the bike. Um, you know, it, it's a lot easier to mentally go through how you're going to execute your run when you have enough. Uh, energy and enough pop and in your legs to really nail the last 20 miles of your bike mm-hmm. um, you're passing people you're focused you've lifted you've lifted the pace or you've just even maintained it you've maintained the pace and doing that allows you to just kind of ride in a flow in a steady state passing people thinking all right I've executed because if you've already if you're doing that then you've already executed 
65 to 70 percent of your race and then you can start thinking all right i'm getting into t- i'm getting a t2 you know helmet off sunglasses off whatever else off shoes on cap gel race belt go and then slow 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 you know like you know find find yourself um in the first two or three miles of the run but again like you're the only way you're able to do that instead of panic because on the flip side if you're spending that last 20 miles 25 30 miles sitting up losing ground losing pace watch are dropping feeling fatigued then you know what you're going to do you go into like instead of flow mode flow mode you go into triage mode mm-hmm. okay well in order to keep up with my race pace and my goal i'm gonna have to i'm gonna have to do this on the run or which is going to set, set yourself up for failure more than likely because you're going to over overshoot or b the worst mentality well there goes my day and then you're now you go into the run with a negative um almost like I don't know if this is the right wording, but almost like a submissive attitude to where, well, there goes my day. Now I'm just going to kind of, you know, do whatever. Uh-huh. And you, so it, you're, you're restrained uh, again, just by your own, you know, your own energy level and your own mentality. And so and that's, and those are the parts of, of execution that people I think rarely think about because they get so data driven and numbers that they don't think about the mental emotional aspect and confidence um and freedom that knowing what what if i can get to the halfway point of the marathon and think you know i've got a little left in the tank to maybe even just possibly push it versus sitting up the last five miles of the of the iron man bike thinking dude this run is gonna suck Mm mm-hmm those two things are, I mean, they couldn't be any farther from from the other. So we've t- just we've talked about um, kind of uh, easing into your flow on the swim and the bike, but I, I now that you're talking about that, uh, I think about how that happens on the run and people don't. And because there's such a relief to get off the bike, right? And then you think, oh, yeah. you think you're like, all right, now I just got to go run or walk or I'm safe, I'm on ground, blah, 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 that stuff. But I I wonder how many people come out of that run, out on the run, a lot tenser for that, like what you're talking about, uh, than they think, you know? It's like, you know, how I, I know how I am when I start my any run. It's usually that first two miles. It's like all I can do to try and relax. And it's like you get out and your sort of like natural inclination is to start pushing that too. And then finally, you know, you kind of start to feel your shoulders drop and relax a little bit and whatever. But so the same kind of thing, I guess, is what I'm saying can happen on the run that, you know, you come out on that bike too hot and you can do it on the run. I mean, not just too hot, but just, you know, kind of tense. Like you need to get that whole thing done right now, you know? Yep. Yeah. I mean, so um, here's the thing: is like in the and it goes both ways, I think. And when it comes to flow and feel and and having the confidence in your body to let it do what you've prepared it to do, not what you may have estimated it can do. And what I mean by that is, you know, and I've, I've talked to a lot of athletes in the past too, have said, well, I knew when I got off the bike, I had felt so good that I could pretty much just not mail it in, but they had this, well, all I've got to do is hold this and I'll be sub whatever, which was their goal. So they don't really race and push themselves the whole way. They, they get to either two ends of the spectrum because the other, the, the third one, I'll get to that in a second, is the most difficult one to make the leap to for various reasons. But I'll get to that in, in a minute. The first one is you get off the bike and your race is shot. Or your your goal that you spent all year and the number you came up with 12 months ago for whatever reason is now gone. And then you get off the bike and you're like, uh, well, whatever. So it, this run doesn't really matter. I can just kind of, you know walk the first aid station and make it through and you know my my quote unquote race is already toast Mm -hmm. so you got that mentality which is which is i don't want to say it's a terrible mentality but it's definitely i wouldn't say 
productive. Then you got the second one, which is, all right, I got off the bike. That you know, the weather was great. My, my swim was awesome. You know, the current gave me like an extra 15 minutes off my swim. The bike was super fat, much faster than I thought. I'm like 30 minutes ahead of schedule. So now, now all I have to do is do this. And so you actually restrain yourself and don't push yourself to what you actually might be capable of on that day because, again, you've already, you know, at that point to yourself conquered or met or exceeded um, whatever expectation you laid out for yourself based on numbers, based on 12 months ago, based on whatever. The third one is the toughest. And it's a toughest for a lot of reasons because it's a risk reward feeling. It's a risk reward um, direction to go. And that is, and it's and you can only get to that kind of that third door if you've executed your race pretty close to perfectly. And you get off the bike and you think, man, I've executed this race really, really well. I feel really, really good. Should I just let my body do the talking and stop thinking? And I think that's what it comes down to, and, and and that's so you know the even more of a reason you know I'm I'm leaning towards the no watch thing is, let my body do the talking, let my mind, you know worry about other things or just be in the moment, because with, but but with that risk also comes, what if I blow up. Or what if what if I miss this goal because I didn't know like what my watch said and like dude listen if you miss it by like thirty seconds, I, I I can I will listen to your argument. If you miss it by like even five minutes, you know how hard it is to pull five minutes faster on an Ironman marathon. Like you can't tell me you would have like but if I had just pushed a little bit harder I could have gone from a eleven minute mile down to a nine thirty those last five. I'm like no you couldn't have mm-hmm. um, because your body's usually shot, but. But that's that that third door to where you 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 find that line, and you've gone from I'm completing an Ironman to now I'm competing an Ironman to now I'm racing an Ironman. Yeah. And the racing part can only come when you choose to kind of I don't want to say give in, but you um, yeah, well, you totally surrender to your body from the neck down and what it might be capable of that day and just let it go. Mm. Autopilot. Surrender to your body. Autopilot. Yeah. That's the flow, man. And that's the, that's that, you know, it's don't try. I mean, it's like, who has that kind of confidence? I mean, that's the hard part, right? How do you get there? It, you know, man, I don't even know that it's confidence. I think, because I think there's a distinct belief in com- a, a distinct difference in confidence and, and belief. And I think, I think, because uh, I, I think confidence has just a little bit of expectation and ego attached to it. Um, I, I think belief is that I think it's that internal belief that you have to have both in your emotional and mental. Um, ability to not withstand and execute and let your body run, but when, but on the other hand, is not is knowing you're not going to have any regrets when it's over, regardless of the outcome. Um, mm-hmm. Because that I think is the biggest differentiator to race and le- or let your body totally surrender to what your body's capable of on that day. And when you cross the finish line, no, you know, wearing a watch or not wearing a watch, and just looking up and thinking, man. I gave it all I had, pacing or whatever aside. This is all my body was able to give me today. I have zero regrets. Mm-hmm. And so I think it's that belief within yourself, and it's that it's that willingness. And again, I think it is. It's just it's that surrender. I, keep, I know I keep coming back to that, but it's something that's been a, a huge part of my life the last you know almost four years. Is just like surrendering to what you know dealing with certain things and just accepting them and then no matter what happens knowing that you did the absolute best you could and i think it's at that and that's that freeing feeling that i think we talk about all the time racing free Mm -hmm. 
because you know whatever it is or what, whatever led up to this race or whatever you've gone through or whatever dark place you were in when you signed up for this race how it's like you know how it's transpired or how it's changed and molded you and through this journey and then you get to this race and it's all these important things but when you cross that line you know and you're like and, and you finish and like for me when I visualize myself finishing I visualize hopefully finishing feeling I left it all out there I'm so happy with that effort mm-hmm. and if and if I can think of, and if I can actually finish with those two first thoughts in my mind then I will have had a good day and but I think it's that I think it's that belief you know yeah I, I do agree with you I think it definitely confidence is definitely a part of it but I think more of it is that belief and that surrender that that um, you know today like you said I'm not going to force it today is going to be what it will be and it may be slower than I thought or I may just do something I never thought I was able to accomplish the hard part for me and a lot of people I think is when you say something like I know I did the best I could or whatever and you're happy with that I think sometimes it's just so hard to to believe that too you know like because you get done with the race and you're like, ah, I wish I would have, you know, this, yep. you know what First I mean? The thing like, is, I did my best, but, but yeah, exactly, yeah, but you know, I could have, could have, could have, would have, should have about 20 different things on each discipline <laughs> to get you a, ba- a faster time. Right. So last year, for example, at Ironman Wisconsin, when I, I did the best, I, I did, I, you know, I was definitely in, uh, uh, you know, the number three door. I thought I got off the bike well. I swam pretty well, and I was going to go for it. And then I got through like the first uh, half, the first loop, and then I got to this point where I was I've kind of settled back into door number two a little bit. Where I was like, well, I don't think I have it, and I'm worry I'm a little worried about blowing up. So I didn't let go. So mm-hmm. when I got done, I was you know I had a pretty decent time, and I felt pretty good about it and everything, but. There was that doubt in my mind, you know. It's like, why didn't I just go for it? You know, why didn't I let go? And I, but I kind of reeled it in, you know what I mean, just to be safe. And there was a two prong thing there. Is like I was on one hand, I was kind of wishing I had let it out there a little bit more. But on the other thing, on the other side of it, I was like, really, I kind of really enjoyed that second loop. <laughs> you know, sort of mm-hmm. like a a good feeling for me. And in both cases, I I kind of hit my you know goal, which was you know a pretty solid race under 12 and to do that kind of thing but um i don't know i i there's always that doubt i think i mean but i think that also is it right it's like that was the best i could do i mean that's the best mental decision i may i could make you know what i mean it was like mm-hmm. i have to accept that you know yeah uh and i think we have to do that i mean whether it's training uh you know did I? Did you leave it all on the training table? You know what I mean. Like, there's always that. You know. Yes, you did. You know, that's the best you can do. Don't be, don't be so hard on yourself. I guess is what I'm getting at. It's like, yep. Whatever it is, is you know, is the best you can do. Did you? Um, you know, and, and I think that's why I'm. Uh, I get so. I went into that thing about walking on the on the run. Um, to me. I, I think that that is a sort of a differentiator a lot of times, especially, you know, I've uh, at Louisville that time when it was 100 degrees, I really thought I was going to, like, die that day. <laughs> <laughs> so I get that, you know. I understand that one. It's yeah. just that, like, if it's a decent day and your legs hurt and and you just sort of fold up the 10 at mile 5 or whatever and, do, and start walking, that's when I – and then that's when I question myself, you know. Did I really yeah. – um, do the best I could I mean because it because like again going into this race I'm just mentally preparing you know for that it's gonna hurt it's gonna hurt you know and I know that and that's yeah that's where I'm trying to get my head is like all right just you know get through that yeah and if once I once I get to that point and you made this too is like I distinctly remember uh the second Ironman ever did in Arizona like 2011 or 12 and I remember, I think I, I walked for maybe like 45 seconds of the whole marathon, and I remember thinking, 
when I got to like mile 14 or 15, I was like, man, this, this really, really, really hurts. Mm -hmm. Um, but I'm, I'm going to take it. My, I'm just going to try and make it to the next aid station because in my opinion, like if you're going to walk, walk the aid stations, don't walk in between, Mm -hmm. um, you know, make, make it useful, make it productive. Um, now I, you know, I get it. And sometimes there are hills that you have to walk been there, done that. Um, you know, and I think that's productive too, because I think it's a smart pacing. But um, you know, B don't ever walk downhill. But but what I was saying is that I'm like I just make it to this mile, then I made it to mile 15. And I was like I think I can make another one. And then I was like, all right, got to got to mile 16. I was like, I think I can make another one. And so I, I just I kept that I kept that mentality of like I just gotta make it one more, and then I'll reassess. And before I knew it, I got to like mile 22. Um, I, I walked a little bit up this hill on the backside, and that was it. But I just took it mile to mile. I was like, I think I can make it to one more aid station. And then, then I made a decision. Then I was like, yeah, I think I can make another one. You know, so it, it's it's not it's not uh, totally committing to walking the rest. It's committing to an, acknowledging the hurt and deciding on like a minute by minute basis not a remainder of the race basis in terms of how you approach the remainder of your race or walking yeah sections um little chunks at a time i mean i think that's a great philosophy on everything you know you you, you, it's almost like you almost got one more in you right Mm Mm-hmm. yeah and usually and you and you almost always do you know it's that it's they and I've read like so many research papers about like your mental you know you, you pace yourself in like a 400 or an 800 or a half marathon and even an Ironman marathon how many people have their fastest mile split the last mile and yeah. maybe not the fastest but the fastest of their last back half yeah. I would say 8 out of 10 because they get this adrenaline dump and they mentally push through and they're like okay well maybe I could have done that earlier and it happens for a lot of people. It's like, you know, your your mind, you know, your mind should tell your body when it, when it's, um, your, or excuse me, your mind often tells your body when it's had enough, not vice versa. Um, and the, and the, and that's the tricky part with racing is that, you know, if you, if you keep your, if you keep fighting off your mind in the emotional attachment that we have to this pain, if you keep fighting it off, um, longer and longer and longer you, i think you'd be surprised about how long your body can withstand that kind of pain yeah uh, um D- and, but but we all but we find it out it's, it's you see it all the time like last you know, like last three mile split miles 22 through or 21 through 24 you know like nine minute last two mile pace eight ten <laughs> you're like dude i told you you know you still and it's it's not that you had any more gas in the tank it's that you refuse to let the pain affect the remainder of your race. Yeah. And I think that's, it's just that really hard balance. And, and again, it's, you know, it's probably annoying at this point, but again, because it, it goes back to that surrender of I'm surrendering to the pain. It's going to hurt. I'm going to let it hurt. And my body will physically tell me when it's had enough, not my mind is going to tell me when I've had enough. Yeah. It's like you should uh, visualize each aid station as the finish line. Yeah, to, uh, to an extent, absolutely, yeah. Or, now, or a segment, you know, like first three, second three, or something like that. Yeah. Now, do you uh, do you think that stuff can be uh, uh, practiced? Of course, right? Uh, in races. Yeah. The, I just wonder that, that, because those are the sort of things I like. Not in training. Well, when we – I don't know, though, because like when we did the trace the other day and I got back to the – like we were talking about the last podcast about we got back to the car and then I was like you know what I, I'm going to go down this hill and come back up that two mile climb just to do it because I think I can you know but like just, just okay. always biting off little things like yeah, that yeah yeah I, I agree with that I agree with the decision making aspect of it mm-hmm. but the amount of pain you actually will induce oh yeah 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 no 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 uh, no, no I, I totally agree with the decision making aspect but it's it's that pain part that I think you can – well, at least you should. You should never do it in training because you'll just be shelled. But it's – you know. but in racing, that's the only way to practice is getting to that point. And I will be 100 – there is at least one time in every race, 
at least one time in every single race I have ever done, I think about quitting. Yeah. Every single time. Every race I've ever done. I get to a point to where it hurts so bad, and I'm like, yeah, I'll just peel it around. I'm done. It hurts too bad. Um, every single time. And I'll do it again at Louisville. But it's the decision after that. They're like, you know what? It's not going to hurt any worse. Fuck it, I'm going. And then you just keep going. Um, but, you know, I think, you know, I think that it's, or maybe, or maybe that feeling, all right, I'm going to walk now. It feels so good to walk because good God does it. I mean, there is literally no better feeling ever than to, like, take your first, like, 30 steps of a walk <laughs> after you've been going all day long. Like, it feels un believable yeah it does. but you know what hurts the worst thing ever starting back up oh my god it's the worst <laughs> it's like man it's so hard um for no let me let me with a caveat to that is that you know if you start off with the you know like a week like for louisville i walked the very first aid station because it was just it was just so daggum hot like that was the only way you were going to survive mm-hmm. doing that all good you're because you're you're only walking for 10 or 15 seconds and you're starting back up again but it's that like if you've ran the whole 14 to 15 and then you walk for 100 meters oh boy does it hurt to start again Mm -hmm. um but no i i I agree with you that is the decision making aspect to accept the pain or at least uh welcome it you can practice in training by just decision making and and um you know, making choices you hope to make on race day, which I think is what training is all about, is, is making smart choices. Um, and then you get to race day and um, you get to that same point and you're like, yep, I'm willing to do it again. And the thing is, is you should hopefully be in a more fresh state with the fact that you're finally racing, the fact that you're in an Ironman, the crowd support, the energy, the people. Like, that's the stuff that carries you beyond what you think you are capable of. I bank on it. Mm-hmm. Maybe more than I should. You, well, <laughs> I, th- I think, I don't know about more than you should. I mean, I think that, um, you know, I think we we all hope that it will help because we can't imagine not having it is the thing. Um, and, you know, I think that, you know, we we get to that we get to that aspect and um you know you're like man i, I but i if for for louisville i do the same thing if i can just make it back to town there's going to be so much like you know let's say uh i start hurting at like mile 10 or 11 on the run uh, and then but i'm heading back to town i'm like man i would really love to walk but if I can just make it to town, mm-hmm. I can get all that crowd support, all that energy. I can see Allie, Hay, and my mom, all our C26 peeps. And then by the next thing I'll know, I'm at like a mile 15 or 16. Because it, it takes you out of that self and into other people because you look around, you hear voices, you're high-fiving. You know, it's it's removing yourself from where you know you are that I think also helps you get through those really, really rough patches. And then it's that other like you know that carrot where man I'm at mile 18 at the turnaround I've got 8 miles to go if I can just make it like 4 more miles then I'll get back to close to the finish line where I can hear it and I can hear the people and then I just gotta let it go and it's it's those little you know it's those segments and not it's uh, approaching it segment by segment or piece by piece and not giving in to the remainder of the race like a like a walking death sentence. Mm-hmm. Um, nothing is permanent. You talk about it all the time. You're going to feel different every 60 seconds of the race. <laughs> you're going to feel terrible, and you're going to feel like you're going to PR by five hours. It always changes. So don't be a, just like in just like in workouts. So I tell people, don't decide to retire after a workout and one workout, and don't decide to go pro after one workout either you know don't change your expectations based on 30 seconds 60 seconds 10 minutes 30 minutes because it's all going to change so take it by segments approach it in a manner that all i've got to do is just keep uh, literally all i have to do is keep going relentless forward motion 
accepting that it's painful and the sooner I can get done, the quicker it's going to stop hurting. Yeah. Um, hey, and we pay eight hundred dollars to do that. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, we pay. I, yeah, we pay eight hundred dollars yeah, for that years. adrenaline yeah, endorphin oh, dump that's on that's uh, mile twenty-four. That's it. It's like there it is. There's your shot, man. There's your junkie yep. hit. That's it, man. <laughs> uh, do you want to uh, talk about Kona at all today, or you want to like just talk about? Uh, later? we can let's save that for for next week. Okay. Next week we'll talk about Kona. Yeah, I'll make my predictions and how I see the race playing out, and why one person no one is talking about is going to decide the race of many. Hmm. That's what I call. How's that for a good teaser? That's a good one. That's a good Man, one. Man, appreciate. It. Um, we've got uh, some camps next year that we're trying to. Yeah. Make people aware of that are yeah. filling up and selling out filling and whatever. Up, filling up, selling out. April, June camps sold out. August entries are open. Uh, and um, yeah, we have swim camps as well in May and July. So uh, if you have any want, if you want some additional information about that, um, let me know. C twenty six coach at gmail dot com. Happy to uh, send you over some info. Yeah. Um. Yeah, and it, even though the coupler are full, make sure you just email and because you get on a waiting list or you never know what's going to happen. Yeah, because we already had one person transfer from April uh, yesterday um, because one of our athletes, Jordan, she got engaged. So um, she's uh, which is awesome. So she's moving uh, camp, but literally before I even had a chance to post it, we had it open. Somebody emailed and signed up. So it is oh, back. <laughs> it's back. To, yeah. So uh, back to sold out, but. Uh, um. Anyway, yeah, just uh, you know, w- people transfer all the time to different ones because of other life events or, or family things, and so uh, or put that money towards training or something like that. So yeah, even if you're interested in the, you know, if you are interested in the April and June camp, you know, please uh, email me as well. I'll give you the additional info on how we can follow up. Yeah, and uh, w- get on our. Uh, w- I just want to like throw out uh, our YouTube channel because we're. After this race, and and going into it, we're going to be really um, getting more on the video stuff. Um, I had, if you haven't seen it, we just posted uh, the Chattanooga Ironman Chattanooga tribute video, and uh, we're doing stuff like that. But we're also going to be doing you know more like uh, I guess mini podcasts, breakdowny type live Facebook you know Q and As and things like that, and all kinds of stuff. But uh, Get on there, uh, f- uh, subscribe, I guess, to Crushing Iron on YouTube. Oh, did I, so I, had, I posted that video. <laughs> you know, it's like some uh, some girls like, Jesus, I spent half my day out on the bike. Are you? Is the film crew like opposed to going out to Chickamauga or whatever? <laughs> I was like, Jesus. You know, who said that? Somebody in the Chattanooga group. I said, man, I said the film crew, quote unquote, is me. <laughs> It's like one person get, doing it for free. Yeah, yeah exactly. Take your attitude back to Chickamauga or whatever <laughs> it is and, and reevaluate. Give me a break, people. <laughs> I know, man. We're just doing these videos just to tribute and kind of like, as our mantra is, uh, uh, C26 triathlon making age groupers famous. Yeah, and ourselves um, homeless. And ourselves um, homeless. Yeah. <laughs> so that's, yeah, well, that's what on, we're doing, people. man. Just she be, she apologized. Kind of shit I can't stand. Come I know. On, it was just this, this reaction. Like, really? This is Can't just like, the bike crew make it out to the yeah uh, the well. film crew? She actually yeah, kind right, of apologized. The, the film crew. I said, I am the film crew, man. Give me some slack. <laughs> and, uh, Seriously. But she did apologize and thank thanked us for making the videos. But I just want to make that oh. clear. I think sometimes people get confused that maybe that is like the Iron Man video, um, and it's not. It's just something we're doing to at that you know select races we can get to to you know sort of like. Uh, mem- memorialize the moment, you know, and and hopefully showcase some of you in action. So that's what that's all about. Yeah. 
God forbid we don't get you on the bike whizzing by for a half second. <laughs> that, right, so. that film, that's my goal. I'm the done, film I'm crew done. next year will try to make it out to Chickamauga. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll rent a car and, and spend more of our money to go out and get a hotel and a rental car to get on the bike for us to get you whizzing by in your spandex where you can't even read your number. I'll tell you uh, what, if, you, if, you, um, if she wants to, you know, Hit us up on Patreon and support the podcast and everything. Maybe we'll get a helicopter out there next she year. She doesn't sound like a podcast supporter. Well, um, not yet. Our, our podcast listeners are too awesome for that. Uh, <laughs> quick question in terms of, uh, is is your bro coming to Louisville? I, I haven't got the confirmation yet. Uh, i tell you what. If Chris is being flaky, he's going to get a little text or a Facebook message here pretty shortly. Yeah. All right. I think, uh, I think he'd like to hear from you, as always. Um, We'll have to get a backup crew then. Yeah, well, CC's coming in, you know. And uh, you're gonna trust him with it? Well, I mean, he's, he, you know, he's moving back to Nashville. Is that, is that out yet? Oh man, I don't know. We may have to edit that part out. Okay. Well, CC's gonna be here at my house for a few days before Louisville, for some yeah, reason. Gets in, gets, a, gets, a, gets in town Sunday. Yeah, and uh, he said. Uh, He'd be happy to do some video shooting, and uh, I just have to spend the you know a few days training him. So I'm gonna take him yeah, out to the lab and get action CC. shots of me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if I can get Jim out there to fly the kite, we can get CC, some good. CC is one of the good guys. We're happy to have him back in uh, in Nashville. So, uh, um, yeah, I'm sure he. He's a smart character. I'm sure he'll pick up on the video stuff. Uh, just tell him to get his ass out to Lagrange and get me on the bike. <laughs> <laughs> I think, yeah. Um, CC, we'll see. CCC, the Corey Coggins crew. I'm just gonna, uh, you know, give him a huge uh, video card and just say, "Keep it rolling," and <laughs> and I'll make something happen out that's of it. That's it, man. If it dies in T1, it dies in T1. Yeah, that's about it. Um, what else we got going out there, man? Oh, Crushing Iron Clothes Group. If you're not in it, search. Yep. It's like, you know, slowly building that so, that group, down. and it's 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 a solid group. And oh, in the in the clothes group, you get some excellent uh, Q and A's from Coach Robbie. Yeah. Live uh, Facebook, and every Try once in a while, Mike will get on there once. Yeah. He's one for one. He's one for one. You can just ask us any questions you want. It's kind of cool. Yeah, I think so. Um, what else you got going today? Uh, brr, swim and a run. Yeah, well, my swim's yeah, already and done. And I have a uh, special delivery today. Oh, you do? Yep. <sighs> special delivery. One of my, um, well, at least for the next, uh, we'll call it two weeks, my favorite athlete uh, Matthew Dickinson is has shipped me his Norma Tech boots. Shut that. What? Yeah, for the next two weeks I'll be. Uh, is that why he had to call him his, your favorite athlete? Is that what the trade was? Yeah, I mean for the next two weeks, and he goes back to the back of the line. But uh, <laughs> the next two, I'm just kidding, Matthew. For the next two weeks, yeah, man, I'll be. But hey, don't be upset because you and I are sharing a hotel room. So, you also get to partake in the gloriousness that is the Norma Tech boots Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday night, instead of having to go sit in the, that ridiculous line at the expo. Wow. Uh, do we Are those good for pre-race? Oh, yeah. That's the only time I like to use them. I don't like to use them much during training. I, like, I, like I mean, but after the race. Eat. Oh, for sure. We'll be using those. Uh, Sunday night after the race around midnight when we record Monday's podcast. Oh can, yeah, we can do we can do it simultaneously. I can hop in the left leg and hop in the right leg, and we can just swap. <laughs> Have a little Norma Tech post race party <laughs> up in room three forty seven. I was gonna say three forty seven <laughs> Marriott right by the finish line. B Y O R. Bring your own recovery stuff. <laughs> recovery room. <laughs> oh, all right. I guess that's it for today. All right, man. I'll check Surrender you to your body. Surrender to the race. All right, man. I'll catch you See later. You. Bye. See you, dude.